Wednesday, folks. You have made it to hump day. Thanks for joining us for this digital edition of <laughs> Wake up, Charlotte. I'm Ben Thompson and I'm Carolyn Brock. We're going to get to your top stories of the day coming up in a few minutes. But first, we're checking in with Larry for a look at the forecast. It is going to be a very nice day today. Maybe a little bit cli a little cloudiness in the afternoon, but otherwise comfortable temperatures. Noontime at 72 degrees. Clouds will increase throughout the afternoon. Mid to upper 70s today, but notice as we get into tomorrow morning, 3 a.m. Here comes a very, very heavy rainfall. In fact, our rainfall chances over the next seven days is really tomorrow and again on Friday. Then we have a streak of dry weather for maybe five to six days. Check out the seven day forecast for today. Once again, mid to upper 70s, heavy, heavy rain, flooding rain potential tomorrow. And they'll last all day into the evening, overnight into Friday morning before we get to fall over the weekend. Upper 60s and low 70s, and we stay dry weather with 70s uh, Monday, Tuesday, and next week. So pretty decent forecast, uh, excluding tomorrow and Friday, and that's the way it looks this morning. Sounds good, Larry. Thanks. All right, the five big stories of the day now in your morning rush. Today, CMS district leaders meeting to lay out when and how your kids could get back to in-person learning. The Board of Education expected to move forward with some sort of plans for getting some students back in class. It would likely still be a, a, some sort of mix between in-person and remote learning. That meeting, by the way, is set for 6 o'clock tonight. The Mecklenburg County Health Department says nearly 7,000 people were incorrectly told they tested positive for COVID-19. Health director says a glitch in the county's contact tracing program sent out those texts and emails Friday. It was followed by a correction to all those affected people, so they were notified immediately. Health director says the incident did not affect our numbers in any way. Officials say some people in Mecklenburg County are getting two absentee ballots. The Board of Elections says it had to relabel a stack of the ballots and some of the duplicates were mailed out. Officials say even if you try to mail back both, only one absentee ballot will be accepted by the system. South Carolina lawmakers are trying to make it easier to vote by mail. Under a new measure, you could submit an absentee ballot without providing an excuse. You'd still need a witness to sign the ballot. The measure passed the House and Senate is expected to go to the governor's desk for final approval. Today, the NASCAR Hall of Fame will reopen for the first time since March. It will be open every day except Tuesday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. The hall says it's increased cleaning measures and masks, of course, will be required to attend. That's it for your Morning Rush. Good morning, everybody. Hurricane Sally has officially made landfall at 545 this morning in Gulf Shores, Alabama. I'm starting to see a lot of videos on social media showing the powerful winds that it's packing, also the heavy rain it's dumping, and the very dangerous storm surge. The National Hurricane Center predicting that this storm and hurricane will cause historic and catastrophic flooding in the northwest part of Florida and southern Alabama. So this video here is from our Wake Up Charlotte's Jay, G Jay Gray. He just tweeted this less than an hour ago showing the power of the storm hoping he and our crew down his crew down there stay safe also a dangerous storm surge that increased from last night to this morning and powerful winds that intensified so look at the first video of storm surge and then the second one the first one was from last night this one now from this morning the difference and the power and then another video showing those winds 105 mile per hour sustained winds ripping road signs along highway 182 that is in alabama hurricane sally definitely making her presence known we'll continue to follow the very latest as far as the videos and pictures go over on social media as this storm makes its way through um, Alabama. Guys, back to you. All right, Rachel, thanks. Time now to connect the dots when we make the news make sense. Experts have been saying for months now that you should wear a face mask anytime you leave the house. Now we're learning it may protect you for COVID-19 in more ways than one. Researchers studying coronavirus have an intriguing new idea. Face masks could be operating as a type of vaccine for COVID-19. Let's connect the dots. The idea of exposing people to a less lethal form of a disease to cause an immune response has been around for hundreds of years. Now, a group of researchers have published in the New England Journal of Medicine that face masks are doing the same thing, exposing the wearer to small amounts of the virus without making them seriously ill. The theory is still unproven, but using data collected by coronavirus infections in animals and what they know about other viruses, these researchers think masks can allow a small number of germs to slip through potentially forcing our immune systems to produce antibodies to the coronavirus. 
This theory could only be proven in clinical trials where people will be exposed to the virus. Since that would be unethical, we'll probably never know if it's true. But researchers say this is even more motivation to keep wearing those masks. And that is Connecting the Dots. Now to some stories to keep you and your family safe and sound today. If quarantine 15 has you wanting to hit the gym, bring your partner with you. Experts say that's one of the ways couples are keeping the spark alive during the pandemic. Other ways to make the most out of quarantine, at-home date nights and planning a road trip. Nearly two-thirds of people say the pandemic has brought them closer to their partner. Perhaps you're driving less because of the pandemic. Well, if you're out of practice, here are some top things to avoid while behind the wheel. These are signs of a bad driver. People say ex excessive speeding was number one. It's followed by cutting people off in traffic, never a good thing. And then following too closely behind somebody else. I would add to that list going slow on the left lane. That bothers you more than anything. Or going really fast in the right lane. Like, know, know your audience, know where Stay you're Stay in at. your lane. Stay in your lane, literally. <laughs> Uh, by the way, more than half the people say they would actually end a relationship if their partner was a bad driver. That's a little extreme. It's serious. It says a lot about you, though. It does. How you drive? Whether or okay. not you get lost. That's what GPS is for, Ben. That's right. All right, make sure you catch us every single morning starting at 4.30 a.m. on Wake Up Charlotte. Have a great day, everybody. <laughs>